uh, to quote uh, Professor X, to me, my X-Men, or oh, actually, to me, my Puerto Ricans. I'm Lou. I'm Mo. What's up, mi gente? I can only give you an idea. You already heard from the intro what we're going to be talking about today. That's right. X-Men 97. 97, brother. Oh, yes. my God. We're only just a few days away before the actual final first season season ender probably a, a cliffhanger i hope not but if it is uh, but excellent at the same time because this show has done nothing more i, I have to say I, I am left speechless every episode that has come about from this speechless to say the least i'm hoping it is a cliffhanger it, no. it, make, it makes you want it more but a cliffhanger, as long as they don't take two years to come out with the second part. Yes. The second season. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's like I'm still waiting for like, you know, with, with other shows and they have a cliffhanger. It's already been a year. And I'm like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You so know, I'm, in the, I'm fiending over here, bro. I need my fix. What's up yeah. with that? Yeah. But I, I got to tell you, man, this team uh, of creators, I, I took my hat off to them because they have done an outstanding job. I mean. As one one particular uh, interviewer once said, is if you wanted to bring the X Men to life in, in, in the cinematic universe, this is the formula. This show is the formula. Excuse me, to be used to bring them to life because it, it pretty much has everything. Pretty much has everything, and this is from an animated series. It's not like you know, it's not cheesy. It's not corny. You know, it, it has the, the blend of good drama, but at the same time, you know, you, you have your laughs and then you have moments. And that's what we want to talk about, like certain moments that the animation just brings to life. Like the, the very first episode, the first instant, you know, and the first person to walk in that just tells you where this thing is already going, Magneto. Yes. I'm telling you, when that brother came on the scene, I was like, oh, damn, it's like they're taking this from the comics. And I gotta tell you, yo, Magnus is badass. I mean, they when they when they did work, they did work. I mean, look at that, bro. Makes me wish I had that long flowing hair all over again, bro. I missed that. But the brother's been drawn as badass. Yes. Badass. And then, you know, with with the season as it progressed, it was like one moment after the other. Like I'm going, like, wait, I remember that issue. I remember that issue. I remember that issue. So, like, it, it was to me. I like to say thank you for thinking of us because you you didn't recreate the wheel. You just actually took source material. Like we always say, when it comes to bringing it to the screen, use the source material. It's there. You know, it's not going to steer you wrong. If you're going to bring it to life, use it. And they did, and they did it effectively. I, I, I am, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for the end. Hating it if it's a if a cliffhanger, but loving it for everything that has brought it. It rewound me back to that nine year old who was reading X Men for the first time again. Uh, that's that's how I'm feeling about it. Like, um, you remember uh, was it episode two, uh, the trial of Magnus? Wait, before we continue, mm -hmm. we should say to the viewers, spoiler alert: if you haven't watched it, it's not our fault. You should have watched it. So. If we say anything that you haven't seen yet, that's your fault. <laughs> We've already watched it. La, 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 la. That's much. what you got to do now because we ain't holding nothing back. We're going to put it all forward with yes, the exception yeah. of nothing of not knowing what's going to happen in the last episode. But everything from here now, oh, well. Yep. It's going to be said. So you got one if week not, to watch the last episode. If not, then let this be the catapult that launches you right there and binge watch the first nine episodes so you're ready this week for the final one because, trust me, it is worth it. Hell, I'm even going to binge watch the thing again when the last episode does happen so I'll watch it straight through from beginning to end because, I, I mean, I can't get enough of it. Yes. I, I, like I was saying before, uh, with episode two with the trial of Magnus, you know, throughout it, I, I'm like, Man, this is getting intense, and it's taking it from the comic book, even to the pivotal scene when, um, when, 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 um, Storm. That's right, Storm actually dives in front of Magnus. Is 
and takes a shot for him. I'm like, what? Yes, I'm like, yes. what? And, and that shot takes away her powers altogether. It was it, from what Hank was saying that the the same method that was used in the collars to take away their powers, the radiation was tripled in that gun yes. to the point where the effects were permanent. I mean, there she is. She's she's actually putting her life on the line for him. And they were all, I mean, remember, this is the X-Men's greatest enemy. Now their mentor, their, you know, the guy that's leading them. So I'm like, what? Yeah. And then what he did after. Mm. Oh my God. When he uh he is the most powerful mutant. Mm-hmm. He is mm-hmm. he's you know, they got they got alpha betas and everything of, of mutants, but Omega, he's no. beyond Omega. Yeah. He's yes. him and him, Jean Grey, and Storm are beyond Omega to me. Because yep. Storm is considered an Omega. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. She's an Omega. She's an Omega. I mean, this man, to make his point clear to the tribunal, he actually just like took the gunman, put him on a platter that he ripped off the wall, and then took the whole stage where the three were sitting and took it up into the stratosphere to have that conversation with them. Yes. You know, and I'm like, oh, I thought he was going to drop him. I really was like thinking, nah, come on, this is kind of like a kid show. It's like, is he going to drop him? But I'm like, he didn't. And I was surprised. Yes. I mean, he has them right. I mean, it's like he has them right there. And he reminded them, he said, that he is doing what he is doing because he made a promise to his old friend, Charles. You know, and Charles, yeah. I mean, no matter how you look at it, even if they were enemies, or you could say frenemies, if you like, to, to be more, more accurate, that he has his vision of the future with homo, you know, with homo sapiens superior roles. Yes. And of course, Charles has his vision in which homo sapien and mutants learn to coexist side by side. Now, which one, which which one would you agree with? It's well. Here's the thing, as I said before a while back, you know, as a kid growing up in in, in the hood over in 116th, 2nd and third, I was a nerd, and 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 of course, you know, it was frowned upon in those days. So, learning about life came in the form of television and comic books. So, I didn't learn really much about racism. But, you know, I was never allowed out in the streets too much. My parents were very strict, so comic books did. And X-Men was the forefront and made me understand what racism was about. Now, taking that all in and just watching how the story progressed, it's like um, I, I, I agree. I lean a little bit more towards Charles as far as coexistence is concerned because that's where you really want to go. But I can't blame Magnus for doing and behaving the way he is. I can't blame him because remember, he's the child, he's a Jewish child from the concentration camps. And you see yeah. that he's tagged, he's got that number there. So no one knows more of when it comes to genocide and oppression and, and, and being and, and just living day by day whether or not you were going to live the next day, whether or not a Nazi was going to come and put a bullet in your head just for who you are. So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a heavy, 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 and I'll say burden for a kid young to, to, to live through and then to grow up and know that you have abilities and now people, you know, fear and hate you. And that then turns back to relating to the, the the time that you know that you're Jewish and in all those times that you were in a concentration camp fighting for scraps to live uh not knowing whether or not you're gonna wind up on a firing squad you know I can't blame him for for doing what he does I can't blame him for drawing the line in the sand and telling those fearful humans as he put it this far no further yes and, and you know it's like when people talk about comic books, they just say, oh, that's just a comic book. It's got cartoons. And it's like, it's not just that. It's it's storytelling. And, you know, back in the days, as I was saying earlier in our earlier shows, that, you know, the, the, the language of the show, I mean, of the comics were changing before. It was like, I will stop you with my magnetic gun. And now it's more like, 
you know, you can't stand us for 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 who we are. Yet we put our lives on the line every day to protect you. Now, Why? Now, now, a lot of times schools even use comic books nowadays. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you know, sometimes I kind of wish I could go back to being a kid again. Yeah. And go to school them. now. Because the vocabulary is 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 up there in in the in the yeah in storytelling like said, yeah mm -hmm. like when I was a kid as I said before growing up you know Catcher in the Rye and all those other English books pff, ugh, they didn't capture my attention but yet I had the Incredible oh, Hulk no. I had the X Men I had Avengers yeah. Fantastic Four and anything in there that I couldn't understand. Webster's Dictionary, blah, 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 blah. okay, I know the word. Now I understand what the story is trying to tell me. And at what, sixth grade, I was already in high school level reading. When I took the Regents, I mean, they thought, like I said, <laughs> he's special ed, <laughs> put him in a room. But I had the comic books. And then when it came to the reading exam, boom, blew that thing out of the water. I was college, close to high school level, near college, bro. I was reading like that because those stories capture this, the imagination. Yeah. But also, questions it makes you question that's 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 why i always say story is so important because if it doesn't engage you or make you think or question and it's just crap you know it's a, to be honest it's just crap it's not telling you anything it's not doing anything for you no. story is what makes it what makes it happen makes makes you want to want more i like the build-up of stories oh i love this this is if a build, yeah Build up this show, this and it's like I said, taking it from the source material, it is a build up. I mean, case in point, episode three, the uh, the Genosian, when they actually were seeing Charles Xavier's dream being brought to life, yes, and then of course, you know, the whole progression of the fact that the United Nations wanted you know, decided that they're gonna one, forgive Magnus, two, introduce. People from Genosha, mutants, into the United Nations. So now they have a place and a voice. So progress, great, great, great progress. And then, and then without warning, the Sentinel arrive. And the devastation. I mean, it's a car. Okay, it's an animation. But when you're watching that scene and watching that Sentinel shoot a blast, wiping out people, I mean, wiping out people. I mean, that was in itself genocide. Did it remind you of anything that's happening in today's time? Yeah, what's happening in, in the USSR? Uh, yeah, with, with Ukraine. Ukraine. Also, yeah. the, the the devastation with uh, what is that? Uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was. It, it reminded me of that. Yeah, war is, war is no joke, but this was more than war this was like i said it was an actual extermination of a, of a people you actually felt these episodes this episode because oh hell yeah episodes you saw growing up they were just they were just dying they were just i mean this thing stood like 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 something out of a, a yeah and i had to say it in comparison a godzilla flick and it's shooting a ray down it's this huge monstrosity and it's just wiping out everyone yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, and I'm like, what? You got to be kidding me! And I'm like, this is an animation, but I'm like, I'm feeling and feeling it. And then, then the two scenes that really hit. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, like, yeah, there it is. It's just bam, destroying everything in its path. And Magnus, you know, at one point you could see even that he was feeling uh, powerless to stop it. Yeah. But yet there's always that one person, that one person that will do it all. They don't care. It, it is for the salvation of their kind. And I got to give it to Gambit. That one scene where he's just like, you know, the cards are in my favor. And yeah, he's yeah. going and he's he's going for broke. He's going for broke. He's got to stop it. And then just and just when you think it's like, oh, shit, he's got it. Clamp that line, boom, stabbed. I mean, the face changed from like, I got you to you got me, and I'm like, what? Yeah, and then just seeing how, how that master mold is just holding him above and just staring him at the face, saying, Mutant neutralize, 
and of course those famous last words of his in the show. And the name is Gambit. Remember it. And then he mm. just charged the line, which connected it to the master mold. And boom. Yeah. Gone. I mean, literally. I mean, I was like, yes. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck. What? I mean, what happened to Remy? And I'm telling you, it's like when, when the devastation was over, uh, and I think the most, yeah, there it is. Just right in his face, just letting him know. The name is Gambit. Remember it. And then, bam, laid him out. But then the most heart-wrenching of that story, I mean, I was like, I watched like twice. And again, it just had that same effect each time when I watched the end. And as Rogue holding Gambit, which is something that she couldn't do. Yeah. Couldn't do with him. She couldn't touch him because in fear of her powers and maybe putting him in a coma. And she's holding him and she says, Remy, I can't feel you. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And it ended just like that. And I'm like, you, oh my God, you got to be kidding me. I was dying for the following week. Oh my God. It's like, I, I just kept reliving that moment and seeing it. It's like that image of, of her holding him like that and, and just, that, oh. That, that hurted me as much as Superman when, when Lois held Superman after the death. Yeah, and then of course the the funeral, the, yes. right then and there. It's like ah, oh, the opening scene right there with with the whole group there. It's like saying, "Damn, a funeral already!" I mean, yes, they're no stranger to it because how many times you know they they've had that with Gene and now with Remy uh, and so many of the other mutants that have fallen in Genosha that they were still picking up and trying to revive. And then you have that that eulogy. That beautiful eulogy from um, from Nightcrawler, and, you know, he's in this priest's outfit, and that and what's funny with that it is, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I remember, as far as the comic books were concerned, yes, he, he's German, right? But it was never I was I until I think the movies, like in the very second Brian Singer film, there was never, and I could be wrong, and, and chat, you know. Please correct me, but I don't remember ever seeing him discussing verse for verse the Bible. He used ever. to quote it in the comics. Once or twice, I yeah. think, but not as a constant. Like, mm -hmm. Beast is constantly quoting everything literature, every literature mm -hmm. you can think of. That's the beauty of him. It's like you can tell he's like the smartest man there is because everything had some uh quote from literature that he uses for that scene but i love, when, I love the right of the right when nightcrawler no and then he's standing there and he's wearing you know a priest's gown and, and he's doing this beautiful eulogy for for gambit you know stating that you know he always thought he thought life was like the cards it was wild but it's not and and, and it's like you, you're standing like i almost started getting misty eyed because it's like damn it's like he's really dead <laughs> And, and, and it's true about his life, you know, that he was a swamp rat. He is the, his his life of crime with, that he left in New Orleans to, to then to join the X Men. You know, yeah, that that beautiful scene. You see him right there in the background with the cards up in the air, and that's like, oh man, that's like how it's like you wonder to yourself. It's like, yeah, this is an animation, but how they say art imitates life. Mm -hmm. So even though it, it's an animation about you know a group of people, but you can relate to it in one way or another. You can, and that's like I said, the incredible work that this team has done to bring this animation to life the way it did. Uh, I, I was like blown away, and then seeing that last part uh, of when they're lowering the casket into the ground, it's like that finality of it. You know, it's like. Holy shit, Gambit is dead. It's like, no, but it's like somewhere along the line, some I hope, I hope. I mean, the comic book gods are listening as far as X-Men 97, bring Gambit back, bro. You know? I'm sure they are in one way or another, but they got to, bro, because he's no, so unique. Nobody dies in the Marvel Universe. Hmm? Nobody no, dies. That's true. No one really does die. See in that the scene universe. right there, bro. It's just Oh my God! You, you you stare at it, and then it brings back memories and, and thoughts, you know, of people that I've lost in my life. And then, of course, you you get those those feelings that come up, and that's the beauty of storytelling like that—that that the imagery 
that at that point in time, it, it just, boom, takes you there. And then they, those um, emotions start flooding in. You know that there's rumor that uh, Nightcrawler is the next Spider-Man. Hmm. Nightcrawler. I don't know how to feel did, about did, that one. He did something in his past that now he's trying to redeem himself by becoming uh, Spider-Man, but around the Central Park area. And okay, but he has he the Spider-Man too, and everything. <laughs> What's funny is that he's a teleporter. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, web shooters and stuff like that, but no more he has site to site teleporting. Yeah, he won't be using webs. He'll be teleporting. I hope so because I know he could. Well, I don't know if he can climb on walls. He's very acrobatic. But and and that's the thing. If he's if he's you know doing Central Park, okay, I could see that. But the From teleporting, freedom. like I'm just trying to see him, picture him in the suit. But we'll see in time if that's really going to happen. Yeah. If that really is going to happen. But hey, anything is possible. Anything is possible in the Marvel universe. It's not. Across, it's not unheard of. If I come across the uh, image, I'll take a picture. I please. see the image. Yeah. And if you guys out there do see it, please share it with us. I'd definitely like to see it myself. If that be the case. Yeah, it's not out yet. They showed a little promo piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I got to say, um, as I was saying before, the story. Mm. And then the next one, again, uh, 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 one, guest appearance, you know, uh, Bright Eyes, where, where you know, you 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 have two stories unfolding, but Bright Eyes is rogue going rogue. That's it. She's just being her namesake, and that is it. She is laying everything out, and she is out for answers and revenge. You know, the, the, only, the only episode I found kind of crappy was the one with Mojo. Well, you know, that, I have to say, I, I was a I, little surprised with that because I was kind of hoping I was like they did in the 92 version that yes. they would bring in Longshot, and they didn't. No. So I'm like, okay, so why did Mojo appear in the first place? And I mean, okay, it, it to me, I, all I can see from that episode is pairing Jubilee with the Costa. Yeah. Sunspot and Jubilee, which I don't remember in the comic books if that happened for real. But as far as X-Men 97 is concerned, they are. And it's you know, looking pretty good. It's looking pretty yeah. good. It's, you know. There's no short of romance as far as, as you know the show is concerned because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I saw as far as X-Men's romance, 97 romance is going on, you've got Forge and Storm, okay? Uh, and then you have, how can I say? The, In the comic the books, it was the same way. Huh? In the comic books, it was the same way, Forge and True. Storm. But then Storm met uh, the guy from Wakanda. Right, uh, T'Challa. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, being that she's African herself, it was just a matter of time. Um, and then there's the other one. The, in in X-Men 97, you have the, the, the duality, um, the, the, the story that, oh, you know, that, that never changes in time. One woman, two men. Rogue, Magneto, and Remy. The well, love triangle of the three. There's two sets. There's also Scott, Wolverine, and Jean Grey. That too, yes. Yes, Scott, Wolverine, Jean Grey, and Madeline Pryor. Don't forget there are two. Yeah. There are two. So in, in, in essence, you know, you gotta you gotta take your head off the sky because he's got, you know, he's got two of the same exact woman and he's had them both. It's like, come on, dude, flip a coin, give one up, you know, mm -hmm. like seriously. But as far as Wolverine is concerned, well, that's as old as time, you know. There's always a part of him that Gene how can I say gravitates to? And then maybe it's his animal side, whatever the case it is, but she gravitates to that. Even in the movies, it demonstrated it. And mm, it got real, it, it got close and intense, but at times, you know, that love that he had for her is what got him to do the things that he did, especially like in the movies when he had no other choice, but he did it because he loved her. Yeah. And that was it. Not breaking news coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for out there for the chat. But 
seems like we're going to get our first look at Nightcrawler as Spider-Man. And bring it up, please. Please bring it up. Oh, but I, so yeah, so this will be interesting. Now I, you know, I definitely want to see, you know. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm digging the tail, the whole outfit, the little mm -hmm. devil ears on the side. All right. Hmm. Now, now I'm excited. Now I'm excited to find out for Look sure. Look at the ears. Look at the ears. You see the ears. Yeah, I know the the the, the, the oh, pointed ears out of the suit, the tail. Yeah, even oh, the even it? the spider symbol is different. Yes, more outlined and, and, and a lot bigger. It's like reminiscent of the black and white, the first black and white symbiote. Yes, it was stretched out. This one is like the red and black. I'm like, I'm feeling this, so and and I think he's got wrist wrist web shooters. Can I see the that right right there mm -hmm. up there on his other hand. It looks like a web shooter coming off his wrist. Possibility, possibility, possibility. I mean, again, he's a teleporter, but I wouldn't put it past him if he had something like that. You never know; yeah. it might come in handy. Yeah. But I gotta say, okay, okay, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this now. Pick it up and take a look and get a feel. Of what you know, Nightcrawler as Spider-Man. Mm. Uh, again, Marvel, no boundaries, no boundaries whatsoever. Not at all. We'll take a character and give him a, a, a whole new. Whole new beginning, a whole new whatever, the next step into in another evolution, and which I think, in 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 all honesty, that's that's the best approach, you know, like then then doing a do over or another crisis on Infinite Earths. I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean this, this, but at least you're you're taking characters and you're bringing them to another to another uh, another level, like what they did with the Punisher. Uh, being War Machine, having the War Machine armor, you know that is another level, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm no, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to reading this. Yeah, be out I think in the summer. Oh, in the summer, that'll be great. That'll be great. I can't wait for that to happen. Cannot wait. Yeah. And folks, it seems like at that almost that time again. For, for us to open a portal and go into the commercial zone. I'm now. Take us away. And a quick bamf. <laughs> 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 brought us back. Ah, <sighs> welcome again, folks. You're on Nerd Rican. I'm Mo. I'm Lou. And last where we left off, we were talking about the episode Bright Eyes with Rogue. And like I said, she was as she, as her namesake, going rogue, taking names, and kicking ass, and looking for vengeance. There she is, right there, smashing them bots, bro. Oh my God, she was put. She was putting a hurting on anything that got in her way. And then, of course, I was excited because now, like, and it was a smart thing that they they added and guest starred Captain America. So I was excited to see yes. that, see the Cap Man himself. So I was like, okay, this is good. Which means somewhere along the line, I mean, I personally would love to see Avengers versus X Men. That whole comic book line that happened eventually, because I think they're slated. If I'm not mistaken, for not only two but three more seasons, they've been greenlighted for. So one of them, I'm praying that one of them, at the very least, is going to introduce that. You know what I thought that direction was going to go? I thought mm -hmm. it was going to go. I don't know if you remember the comic book series where half the X Men went to Genosha, the other half stayed on Earth, and then there was like a civil war between them, between the X Men. There was two different types of X Men going at it against each other. So Magneto took some in the comic books that happened. And I thought that was the direction they were going to go with when they introduced Genosha, which can still happen. It's just not going to happen this season. Yeah, it can still happen. I mean, yeah. uh, 
towards <laughs> I mean he did at, at was it in the beginning in the 90 92 series he had introduced asteroid M mm -hmm. so as a safe haven for mutants to come and be safe there and be you know in orbit away from from earth itself so basically that would be their land that would be their version of Genosha which you know unfortunately was just you know was what it was. It got shut down thanks to the X Men, but there was still, like I say, a political uprise, mm -hmm. and they weren't going to step in just yet. And Magneto's idea was asteroid M. And like I said, like your question from the very beginning, which side off all of them? Again, I don't blame him because if you look at it, only one other person other than himself. Well, he hadn't made it happen yet, but. Only one person, and though he's a villain, did make it happen, and did. I mean, he became ruler, and he became, you know, uh, leader. Uh, uh, was it Lavatavia? Nothing other than Doctor Doom himself, and he was uh, on the United Nations, and he voiced as far as his country is concerned, but also made it clear: do not cross our borders, no matter what. So again, proven that. You know, one villain ruled with an iron fist and made it happen, while the other one is seeking liberation, even though he believes the war will come and we will be the one that is superior above all because we are homo sapiens superior. We are the next step. It doesn't go anything past us. And if you look at it with the, the I mean, like you said, Jean Grey, Magneto, uh, Storm, all, all, you know, Omega level mutants and more to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, Legion was an Omega level, and that's the son of Xavier, but he's a little too psychotic and imbalanced. But if he had his you know, brain was together, he'd be a force to freaking reckon with and one that you don't want to mess with. If I'm not mistaken, Professor X is an Omega level also. Yes, he is. He's an extreme, he is an Omega level, most powerful mind on the planet. Probably one of the only persons that could actually, at the time, he faced off with Jean Grey as Phoenix and her power. I mean, her telepathic and psychic level were off the charts and he was still able to you know go at it with her at his level and he was again mega omega and bang he managed i think to put her down temporarily in order for them to subdue her and put the collar to, to keep her from not transforming back into dark phoenix again here's so, my here's one of my one of my one of my questions that i always ask every week who would shoot. win who would win who hulk or rogue Hmm, that's a good question. And it reminded me of the one time where to answer that question was when in the in the animated 92 series at one point when the X-Men were facing against the juggernaut and she actually took her powers and touched him and almost had his insanity, but not his power level. So with the Hulk, it would be a lot different, you know, and, and I would look at it as she has the power, she has the strength level of Captain Marvel, but none of the other powers that come with Captain Marvel because she absorbed, you know, just that. So she's she's in par with a gray hulk rather than a green hulk. But, but if she, she would she would touch, absorb she would absorb she, the intellectual part. No, remember if she's facing a, a rampaging hulk, he's not intellectual at the moment. But deep down, <laughs> but deep down is still banner. It's Banner, but Banner is the is the prime example of a multiple multiple personality disorder. Period, you know. Because remember, he was abused as a child, mm -hmm. and became a scientist, mild, uh, but you know, more or less weak. But as the Hulk, his psychosis has many different Hulks in him: a Gray Hulk, a Green Hulk, uh, a Savage Hulk, a World Breaker Hulk. You know, he's had all these different hopes. And yes, of course, there was one time where they managed to integrate the savage with his intellect. And then you had then you had Dr. Banner. He wasn't even Hulk. He was called Dr. Banner for a while until yeah. he then released that creature. This is he shut down the, the, the smart Hulk and turned on the savage Hulk in order to take on Onslaught. Which, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't read yet, that's uh, Professor Xavier. When he goes crazy, he's the psych psychic persona called Onslaught. But that's a story for another time. Wasn't he, sure he, was right, 
Huh? Wasn't there strife? Strife? Wasn't that the name of the the onslaught? Was a storyline? No, onslaught was the character. That's right. That's right. That was the character. Remember, he that character was so powerful that he actually launched Juggernaut from one state to another, and he was afraid. Yeah, I've never seen the Juggernaut afraid, and he was afraid. They, they couldn't they couldn't stop him, and but he was running for his life. But he was tearing up the city, running for his life. Because mm -hmm. and he said one word, onslaught. That's so what did it to him. And I was like, what? And then the storyline progressed. And I was like, oh, holy shit. It's, oh, excuse my French, but yeah. Wow. It's it's Xavier. You would never thought, okay, hero psychically loses his mind. And now he is the most dangerous villain of them all. Dangerous thing there is. Because how do you stop a mind that powerful? How? Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's that's another question too. Well, there was two storylines that I enjoyed, which was that one and the uh, execution song. Mm. Mine was Fall of the Mutants. That's a good one. There was that pivotal scene where they're looking at the mountain. The X Men are being interviewed by a reporter. You know, each one of them had this nice monologue, and each one of them pretty much saying the same thing. It's like you know, we put our lives on the line. Yeah, of course. Why? Because we have to, you know, here are these innocent, innocent people. And we don't have a choice in the matter. We live on this planet as well. And if we don't do something about it, then we're just as responsible as the people that hate us. Mm -hmm. We're just doing no, we're not different than, than they are. So yeah, we're going to go in there and we're going to do what we can. And we're going to put our lives on the line. I'm like, wow. It's like you read something like that. And again, makes you think makes you think. So when you step out into the real world and you look at the diversity of the people around you and then you start to question, it's like, who are you to judge? You know, except, you know, except that there are different people in this world other than yourself. That is with, without a doubt, the truest thing that there could ever be because individuality is what makes a person, a person. Yeah, there's going to be groups, there's going to be followers, but each one of those followers have their own thoughts as well. They have their own feelings, you know, their own moral core that they follow. So reading stuff like this just opened my mind more to look out into the world with different eyes, not blinders and just look one way, one dimensional, and that's it. No, look at the world all around you, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, two-dimensional, all of it, man, because you, you know, you yourself, you are who you are, and there are other people that may agree with you, and then there's going to be a bunch that will disagree with you. But you have to accept those things because that's what individuality is, and that's you know, that's the beauty of what these stories tell you. I, I, I don't think I, on my own, unless I ever came across a situation where you know I'm faced with it, that I would have ever have understood it if not for reading these things, for understanding the stories and what, and what they're trying to convey. You know, forget that it, it, it makes me feel, sometimes it will make me feel angry or whatever, but it engaged my thoughts. It engaged me to think for a second, look at myself and my reality and go, yep, this world is different and these mm -hmm. people are different. That's the beauty, that's the beauty of, of storytelling, you know. I can't take my hat off enough to these guys for what they've done. And this is just season one. Just to imagine what season two will look like. Yeah. <sighs> well, they got to outdo season one now. Oh, my God. From, no the idea. Little, from the little bit that they show, is going to involve Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. It's going to involve uh, Red... Uh, what's his name? The, the... Omega Red. Omega Red. Yep. It's going to involve a few others. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the two that stand out the most to me. Yeah, Omega Red, one of Wolverine's oh, greatest enemies. And speaking of which, it's like in that episode, Life Death 2, um, continuing where we were left off. Yes. I have to admit that that whole thing with Forge and Storm was great. You know, her finding him. And then, of course, the, the, the reality was that that gun or those collars were of his design because 
as a mutant, his ability is to create mechanical things. With his, his mind can create pretty much anything. He's like Tony Stark, but except that his mutant ability sees beyond things that I don't think Tony Stark even saw. Right. And that's you know that's to show you that that man's ability takes him to beyond genius level, and he can create pretty much almost any device. You tell him what it is, and somehow he's figured it out, and bang, you have it. And that sense. was the gun that 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 crippled her, took her powers away. But he found the opposite to bring her powers back. And then you could see, like, when it happened, she she then dawned on the black suit that she had. Oh my god, I love that one most of all because the the one with the the the, the mohawk. Eh, but they went from the mohawk and then boom, the long flowing hair, the the whole black. Oh man, she was up there in the clouds all over again, just hovering over, showing that she is a goddess, mm -hmm. that she is the goddess of the of the storm. Mm, there she is in all her glory, the goddess mm -hmm. of the storm. I gotta tell you, that was that was a very impressive, and I mean impressive uh story that they, they condensed it, but you know what? I liked it. It, it. it didn't have to be too I mean with a comic book, you have your panels and then of course you got next month and next month and next month. But as far as you know, TV show is concerned, you, you got to have some sort of condensed uh, condensing because it's only a half an hour and you got to tell as much as you could in a half hour. But they didn't really take too much away, but they gave you a little bit more with the visuals in itself. And that I, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed on that. And with that came, of course, the now three-parter that we've already gotten two and we got one more left, which is tolerance is extinction i mean of course the, the the villains of course of this whole thing were definitely revealed and you got mr sinister yes and bison and bison bison being the main one of them all but mr yes. sinister definitely definitely his cohort uh, in every sense and i'm like oh shit bison the, the, oh the fact God. that bastion the fact that bastion turned the whole even his own mother into, into uh, uh, Sentinel, it's it's cold blooded. <laughs> cold, cold blooded is an understatement. There he is, Mister Sinister himself. Oh, I mean, he I'm looking forward to seeing him, huh? Yeah, he actually shed a tear for that. Yeah, he actually shed a tear for her because she got shut down. Magneto. No, I'm talking about Bastion shed a tear. Yeah, yeah, because she got shut down. Magneto shut down the entire planet with a magnetic pulse that just shut all of them down. Now, if it, turns, if it turns back on, do you think those people will go back to their normal lives not knowing what they are? Well, as Beast put it, it is a possibility, maybe not now, but with Forge's help, over time they may be able to bring them back to their base personality. But as as um, DaCosta just said, they hated us to begin with in the first place. So what are you bringing them? It's like trying to say, what are you bringing them back for? Yeah. Like you hate us all over again? I mean, again, that whole Xavier, you know, coexistence and, and Magneto with, you know, you can't blame them. You got to draw the line in the sand and sometimes you just got to go, hey, too bad. You know, you got in with the wrong guy. That's what happened to you. Oh, well. You know, like we say in Español, ¿Quién te mando? Bueno que te coge. Simple as that. Simple as that. Uh, but... Bastion, I, I have to admit, bro, it's like I, I was not looking forward to that. And yes, this pivotal scene here when actually Magneto brings back Asteroid M and he's facing <laughs> who else in the wheelchair when we thought he was all dead and he comes back to me, my X Men. I'm like, what? It, it just makes you think, no, you know, and underestimate the power of the handicap. True, but here's the thing. And one of them kind of put it out there, and, it, and he didn't really. Um, he, no, he didn't put it out there. That he, you you abandoned us to go with your Shi'ar bird. You know, I'm pretty sure he was trying to say bitch, but again, it's still yeah. a kid, still a TV show for for adolescents. Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's kind of true, dude. Just like you didn't die, and you went and go hanging out with you know with the girl that you love because you wanted love all of a sudden. And then 
you didn't give the X-Men over to Jean and Scott because you wanted them to have a normal life so they can have a family and Nathan and all of that. And you gave it to Magneto, hoping that Magneto would actually change his ways and follow your path. And again, for a moment, for a moment, he did. He, you ever did, seen, he did walk that road. You ever seen the series Wolverine and the X-Men? Was it Wolverine and the X-Men? Yeah. yeah, Wolverine and the X-Men. I but, caught it a few times. Hey, it was good. And it was. To, me, to me, somewhere down the line, Wolverine becomes leader. And I thought this was going to be one of those times. Well, in this X-Men 97, I think they, they were also, like with, with Colossus and Wolverine and the Asteroid M, it also was giving a, a, um, a nod to the very first ever animated feature of X-Men. I, I remember getting it, and uh, I dare say this, on VHS back then when it first came out. But then it didn't, you know, like after the first episode, it didn't go further than that. And that was X-Men. Um, uh, was it uh, Kitty? Uh, was it Pride of the X Men? Kitty Pride. That's when Kitty Pride, otherwise known as Shadow Cat, was introduced. You know, they had that crazy song X Men, X Men. This is the day, and it's like, wow! I was looking at it for the first time, and true story. When I heard about it, I was gonna run to the quick to to the first comic book store I could find to get my hands on it because mm -hmm. I wanted it. That's how I was like. I got to have it. But on that weekend, on that Saturday that I was ready to go, I got bit with the worst stomach virus ever, bro. I mean, I think I lost 30 pounds from how many trips that God knows to the bathroom. That I was like hurling out everything, everything, bro. It's like if I had nothing else, I, I probably would have hurled out an intestine. That's how bad it was. But I, I was like my mind was stuck on, I need to get it. I need to get it. I got to have it. I got to have it. 24 hours later, I managed to get the bug under control, and I woke up, you know, next day. I had already just broken my finger because broke my fever because I was, like, sweat dripping down me because I, I wrapped myself in everything I could find. If I could fit myself in the, fuck, in, in the freaking <laughs> microwave, I would have just to break my fever. Right. <laughs> I would have just to break my fever. Because I had to get to that damn comic book store, and I did. Still right. sweating with a cold sweat, but good enough to go. Here you go. Here's the twenty. Give me the tape. Go back home. Sat down. Recovered the rest of the weekend watching that video with with my daughters. My wife, my, my ex wife at the time, looking at me like, "You ain't got a video." I'm like, and I looked at her like, "Go ahead, say something. I will puke all over you. I swear to Jesus, I will." But yo, that's how that's how I wanted to see it so bad. It was good, it was good. But again, like you said, it was on the cheesy side. You know, I'm surprised. Back in the not, back in the early '80s, it was more on the cheesy side with the you know cute cutesy music and and the and the funny dialogue. It's not like this now. I mean, this is like mirroring the comic books. It's like it's like as I said before, you brought it to life animated life but you brought it to life now if you bring it to cinematic life you got the formula it's right there right there do what they did boom repeat it's not a shortage of it's not it's not there's nothing of a shortage of actors i would say you know like you say it's just the direction the direct door and it's like saying dude don't corrupt too much of it with your own vision just try to take it and Bring it to life. Don't destroy what it is because you envisioned it something. I don't give a damn what you envision. Bring it to life. That's it. Point is I'm, so, I'm surprised that the Disney didn't bring back the 92 series. Well, it's and on I, repeat somewhere either on Netflix or some other. Right, may, or maybe on Disney. No, it's not. I looked. It's not? Oh, damn. No. Okay. Disney, bring it because if you're playing this, you should be yeah, playing that. Watch, yeah, exactly. It makes sense for people who then who never watched it can go to it and watch it, and then boom, chime in on this one. But yes, there is a a, a very very big 
difference in contrast. I mean, the cart the um the animation is still the same. The voice actors are the same too from the old series to now. Mm, not all of them. Imagine should bring back all of them, most of them to do reprise their voices. Wolverine's voice show. Is the same. No, it's not. But Beast is, yeah. Storm is, uh Jubilee is, and I think Gambit too. Scott, but I think so as well. I know for the first three I mentioned are definite because they're going to be uh, signing autographs at Brooklyn Brooklyn Comic Con, and I saw and I already saw that they're definitely going to be there signing autographs. But the artwork in '92 version uh, can, was is a lot better. In the '92 version or now? No, the '92 version. You sure? Because quite frankly, yes. I'm looking at like Rogue. Rogue had had more curves, which now she looks kind of frail. Uh, you mean malnourished? Because I'm, I'm gonna yes, look malnourished. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Jean Grey looked again much prettier. Mm -hmm. Like the artwork was was different. They, they actually took it from Jim Lee's. Uh, design. Ah, okay. And Jim Lee did the ultimate design for the X Men. He was like top it's Jim top. Lee. Come on, it's Jim yeah. Lee. Hello. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get sloppy work from that, bro. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, cable was a lot bigger in the '92 version. A lot cable bigger, but in this brolic. one, he's not small. He's no, still not small. He, he was brolic. He was. Yeah, yeah. He was steroids. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was like when I saw Josh Brolin, I was like, okay. Shouldn't he be taller? But then I saw how, you know, he put in time in the gym, good time in the gym to really look solid. I mean, yeah, the prosthesis makeup and stuff was great, but everything else was all him. And mm -hmm. show him when he was doing the work, I was like, dude, okay, you really stepped up to your game on this one, bro. And he looked good. I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to lie. He looked, you know, he, he definitely was a cable. I mean, like I said, maybe a little taller. That's all. You know, put a little stilts or whatever in the boots, but that's about it. Anxiously waiting for Deadpool Wolverine. Oh, that makes two of us, bro. Yeah, that'll be my first time watching a Deadpool movie in the theater. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to be there for the theaters for that. Now, on to now, which is the second to last, second to before the final, which is coming up this week. Tolerance is Extinction 2. Uh, I have to admit, this one, this one, like in 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 episode uh three, put me in like the jaw drop, oh my god moment, bro. And again, like in the opening that, that was just shown earlier, where Magneto is standing in front of who? Xavier, because he has returned, you know. And I was like, okay, to me, my X Men, but you know, mm -hmm. everybody's against them. And why? You lied. You abandoned them. And you know, to go get yourself some 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 space Gucci. Okay. And it didn't work out. Okay, now you're back. And you was like, everybody go, oh, it's Charles. Come on. You know, no, that's not happening, bro. That's not happening. Everybody's pissed in their own way, bro. Lucky you, you didn't get like a you know fucking Spanish peco me not doing that to us, sort of yeah. thing. But you you could tell X Men was a hit because mm -hmm. my nephew doesn't watch cartoons as much. He watches Bluey and all this. Six years old, mm -hmm. but he's now quoting X Men. He says, "My X Men to me, to his to my brother." To see, yeah. see, so he, he's killing it right now. Yeah. Yes. Shout How many him. times have we not quoted from other cartoons that we grew up on from? Battle of the Planets. I mean, how many times we didn't sit around and go transmute, yeah, yeah. you know, and doing stuff like that. But that was a testament to the show. I would have, you know, and story, we, boom, we were into it. When the theme song comes up, he's doing Damn. the moves. He's doing the moves. At the end, he does the Wolverine fist. <laughs> when he, when he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, shout out to my nephew Noah, bro. Uh, cool. You got to love that. You got to love that. It's like yeah, when you yeah. see it, it only takes you back to when you were that age and you're like going, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. That was fun. That was fun those days. Yeah. So this storyline, and, and, and again, the two teams breaking up. But first, before the teams break up, of course, their confrontation with Xavier, like that pivotal scene 
where now Xavier is confronted, confronting or being confronted by Gene and Scott. And then he's explaining himself. And, you know, he was thinking only in their best interest or whatever. But like you, I got called back myself. I had to come back. And then he's he's got that handout. And then you just see you just see Scott walking right by him, like, like, nah, like, you know, get it, you know, it was like, get it, if I thought I was there right in the face, a spit in the face or something, bro. You know, it's like, it's like a Spanish novella. You waiting for that pecosada to happen. Nina, toma, right? Smack him on the ball head. That's what you get. And, but he just walked right by him and it's just had that same effect. There you go. Just a back smack him on the back of the head. That would have been perfect right there. I'd have laughed for days if that would have happened, bro. But yeah, that's that's the smack, bro, because that's what you deserve. That's what you did. And then of course, them preparing and planning because Magneto has that magnetic wave around the planet to keep all the Bastion's minions from turning up. Now the two teams one to stop Bastion, the other to stop Magneto. And you know, it's like then comes like the first team with um with Morph, Jean Grey, and if I'm not mistaken, Storm. And I love it. That whole scene where, where Morph turns into the Hulk at that point. The music comes on, Morph transforms, and he's the Hulk. And he goes, Morph, smash! Yeah. It's like I remember somebody was bringing that up. I said, you know, he, his name is Morph. And yes, he can morph into any hero and duplicate their powers. But to an extent, because there was a question that was posed, can morph mean that he's changed into the Hulk? Will he, will he get stronger as he gets matter? No, because his powers, when implode, when, when he uh, uses them, are temporary. So he'll be on Hulk level strength, but only for a short period of time, and then he has to then transform back to himself or into another yeah, person like or team. If he went into and transformed into Wolverine, the claws will break off. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, again, you, you see that, and it's it's oh, I mean, I I got so much more, so much more, but I am being called by the gods one more time, and it seems like another commercial is coming in. So uh, by the spin of mighty Mjolnir, we will go into a commercial. Be right back, folks, with more Notre Rican. Oh, it's actually the end. <laughs> That's right. It is the end. How time flies. Well, I'm going to leave you with this thought here. This last image is what really did it for me in watching this last episode. I'm looking forward to the next. And that is the, the scene, the comic book scene and the animated scene, which shows Magneto ripping out the animatium from Wolverine's body. For that... Yeah. Was the the ultimate right then and there? That image, and like it took it right from the comic books and brought it right onto the screen. And I'm like, what? Quick, quick so message. Was, hmm? quick, quick, quick message to the viewers. Sometimes we get so involved in our conversation, we forget that the ending of the show or the commercial of the show. So forgive us. <laughs> yeah, yes. we get caught up. Can't yes. help us. We're ever loving nerds, and we get into yes. our we get into yes, our talk. Yes. And with that thought, and with that thought, I'm going to tell you right now. I look forward to the end of this week coming up to see the last episode, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do as well. And again, thanks for joining us. Leave a message. Tell us what you think. Give us any show ideas if we like it. We're going to use it, and we can definitely, you know, hit you up and say, "Hey, props to you." But we yeah. definitely want to hear from you to let us know how we're doing in our show. So again, I'm Mo. I'm Lou. And we're Nordoricans. And until then, safe travels. Later.